The time has finally come. I will walk you through all the necessary steps from having a machinima idea to seeing it come to life in video form. This will be a very basic machinima, meaning I won't be utilizing lip syncing or too many fancy effects to keep things easy to follow. I will do a more advanced tutorial in the future, but for now we'll do it like this. Let's begin. Step 1. The Script Before you begin making a machinima, it's essential to have an overview of what shots you'll need. Since we won't be worried about lip syncing, we just have to make sure that we have enough Skyrim footage to fill the screen while the characters talk. So open up your word editor of choice and get to typing. Here I have set up a very simple scene, and this is usually how I type out my machinima scenes. I tend to note down certain angles and certain shots I want, and if it's necessary I'll also write down the emotions that I want the characters to go through, although mostly I have those notes in my head because I know these characters pretty well. And it's not written like it's a novel in a book, but rather in a very, very simplified and easy to read way. But the way you write won't matter that much, as long as you yourself understand it. So this is like a little extract from a video I was planning, uh, Marthar's Amazing Day Off. And I sort of scrapped it, but this is sort of part of the whole introduction to it, right before they go to the hot springs and shenanigans appear. So we see, we cut to Kajor and Marthar standing by each other in the hunting room eatery. I often start off like this just to remind myself, okay, what scene are we going to need? We're going to need to be at the hunting room eatery. We're going to need Kajora and Marthar standing by each other. So here's the info for the setup for the shots. And then we have Kajor talking to Marthar, Martha replying. And we can see that we have some different emotions here. Like here we can see Kajor sort of dodging Marthar a bit and Martha gets annoyed at him. And then Kijor like fakes like, ah, oh, I got stuff to do. Like there are some different emotions here that we can play with and we can use mods like Puppeteer Master to change their faces accordingly, make it seem more real. I also wanted to have a little flashback here to the wow, the wow machinima that I made because Kijor talks about the time they jumped into an alternate dimension and barely made it back alive. And then like Martha makes a jab at it like, how do we escape that world again? And it's like, I can't remember because I never made a part two. And then I also like so sounds like sighs and most of the emotions here I'll, I just know by heart. Um, but usually you can also just write down like starts out sad but gets more angry towards the end. For example in brackets if you want. And then like cuts to be to be continued. So it's a very very short scene with a few lines here and there and it's it's going to be our script. So make sure you have a script before you begin because it helps to flow yo. Step 2. The voice acting. Now you don't need voices in your machinima. If you're just starting out and have no way to record voices, you can always just stick with text over the screen. Remember, it's not the quality of the end product that matters in the very, very beginning. It's the experience gained while making it, completing projects, even if it means going through some less than professional means of finishing it, as long as you finish that project and take the experience you gained from it into account, you'll be better in the future. So don't worry about making it look like a freaking Michael Bay movie straight out of the gate, because I don't think anybody actually wants that anyways. But if you do want to record some lines for your characters, I recommend getting the free audio editor called Audacity, which I'm using because I love it. Here you can record your lines, then apply effects like compression and noise removal. Just make sure your microphone is checked here and then hit the red button and you can record. So on the screen right now, you see a sample of my voice acting for this scene. This is all the Kajor lines followed by all of the Marthar lines. I've gone through it and like chopped out the uh, failed lines and just kept the lines that I want to be in the machinima. And that's just a completely raw file. Now, I'm no master at Audacity, and the settings I'm about to apply probably aren't like the most optimal or best settings ever, but it's what I use, and that's pretty much what this tutorial is all about. So I usually start out using the equalization option to make it a bit more bassy by raising the uh, frequencies to the left here. Can you tell that I have no idea what I'm talking about? Then I move over to the compression to make the sound levels more loud and even and this is a setting that I still need to figure out how to properly use because sometimes we get a little bit peaky peaky so you can mess around with that a little bit and you can feel free to copy my settings or find your own and then finally I need to find a section of pure noise meaning just the background noise so no other background noises or like movements in your chair and then you got to go to noise removal followed by get noise profile once that's done, you need to select all of your clip because now you're going to apply the noise removal. Now you just got the sample needed. So pressing Control A is useful or you can simply just 
zoom out and grab all of it. And then you go back to noise removal and you make sure that you do remove noise. You can copy my settings if you want and click OK. So now your voices are louder, more bassy and the noise is gone. So I can leave some more tutorials for Audacity down below if you're struggling a bit, but that's what I usually do with my own audio. Once you have your lines recorded, you can export it as a .wav file or another preferred file format. I'm not sure if Audacity still, if it supports having like .mp3 files right out of the gate. I think you need like some sort of little add-on thing. It's easy to get, but it could be a hassle, so that's why I'm recommending a .wav file. I'll teach you how to import audio files like this into the creation kit for lip syncing purposes later. But for now, let's move on. Step 3. How do I record my game? Whenever I record, I use Fraps. However, this is a paid software, but luckily Fraps is a trial version that you can use. And while it has a few limitations, like only recording for 30 seconds at a time, and it might have a watermark, I can't remember, you almost never have machinima shots longer than 30 seconds anyway, so it doesn't matter too much. As you can see, you can have a little FPS counter in one of the corners to check your frame rate and also check if it's recording or not, because if it glows red, it's recording. If it's yellow, it's on standby. And then here you can choose where the files will be saved, what's going to be the video capture hotkey, which frame rate. I'd recommend 30 for most purposes. You can choose to hide or show your mouse cursor. And you usually want to hide this when you're making uh, machinima stuff. But I might actually leave this uh, on so you can see my cursor when we go in game. You can also lock frame rate while recording, which could be good because sometimes it jumps up to 60 for me and then suddenly I have like a little speed up and it looks strange. So I usually lock it unless I'm... It all depends on the game, these settings right here. And I would not recommend recording your microphone directly with Fraps for any purpose, by the way. Just record separately in Audacity and just sync it up later. You'll have more control that way. I'll set up screenshots if you want, but this is the important tab. Make sure that your computer is beefy enough though, because Fraps is a bit demanding on your system. So those with lower end PCs, they might struggle a bit running this. So there are other op options that you could use as well. I think you can also use like maybe open broadcaster software, OBS to record. And I'll leave some alternatives down below, but this is all about how I do it. I'm gonna show you how I do it and I use Fraps. So that's what we'll do. Make note of your recording hotkey. Um, make sure it's not like F5 or F9 because I believe those are the quick save and quick load default keys in Skyrim. So you just, you end up with a heartache. So put it to a key that you almost never use. Like I used a slash sign on the numpad because I never ever press that. So I believe that's all we need. Make note of the output folder. Make note of the video capture hotkey. Make sure the settings are correct. And then you can uh, jump in game. Also, the files are quite big, so make sure you have some hardware space. Step four, setting up your scene. All right, here we are inside the world of Skyrim and inside the hunting Bermidary and oh wow, looks like I accidentally brought all of my friends here. So as we can see from the script, Kijora and Martha are gonna be in the hunting Bermidary and we're not gonna have anybody else around. So here's what we do. First of all, before you disable any NPCs, I recommend making yourself a save because then you can safely disable people and then just load it up. Because you should always make sure that your followers aren't following you before you disable them. But I really can't be bothered at the moment. So if you can't be bothered, you gotta take the extra precautions. So it's just me and Marthar. You too, Esbern. Oh, Sabjorn. Who was Esbern then? Hmm, my memory's off. You're gonna go. So, here's Marthar and here's me. We're gonna be in the hunting brew meter re. I'm struggling a bit with frame rate in Skyrim lately. I am getting some more updated hardware, but for now let's find a room in the hunting brew meter where we don't experience too much frame drop. The good thing about fraps, although you can't see it in the recording, but I can actually see the frame rate at the moment. So I want to make sure that it's constantly at 30. Like it drops sometimes now to around 25, which is not what you want to see in it often means that your PC is a bit outdated um, and I am running on 2011 hardware so it's I'm not surprised let's say this room for some reason the frame rate is really awful when I look over there so what if our characters stand like this can I look in these directions yes you probably won't have to take these precautions We've stopped. 
What is it? There we go, it's not turned towards me. So we want to set up a scene here. Now, if you remember in the last one, I talked to you about the Puppeteer Master, and we're probably going to be using the Puppeteer figurines to get some emotions and animations going to make it more interesting. Now, I'm using a player character and an NPC. Kijor is the player character, and when you're making very basic machinimas where you don't need to do lip syncing, this is perfectly fine. The reasons you should not do this if you want lip syncing is because if I go into TFC mode, I cannot trigger Kijor to say a sentence. I can, however, trigger Marthar to say a sentence, like, for example, say VFTD testing, I don't know, 8? And then he'll say a line and move and get the facial expression and everything. So that can happen for Kijor. He'll just stand there and be like, uh, wait, what? What do you mean? It's coming out on August 21st like we hear the voice, but he doesn't actually react to it at all, which is a problem. Another thing you should note is that if you decide to use the command TAI, to disable all AI processing, meaning Martha won't suddenly start walking off to drink the wine over there, you can't do lip syncing more than once. If you activate the lip sync once, no, this is all like lip sync related, I should just not talk about it, but know that you can do stuff when not lip syncing, you can take a few more liberties than, that you can't normally do. Okay, so in this one, in this scene, we can see that Martha and Kijor are supposed to be kind of cherry. So let's select Martha, open up the Puppeteer Master for him, if you're wondering how to use a Puppeteer Master, you can watch the last episode where I went through that mod. And let's put him to happy, sha la la. And Kidora already looks to be pretty happy, so that's good. Maybe I won't need to change that. Let's see, should we do, have Martha do something else? Hmm, what if he does like the uh, examine post? Maybe that'll look good. Yeah, yeah, that works, that works. So Kidora's gonna be standing here, Martha's gonna be standing here. Okay, it doesn't last that long. Well, this is fine for now, so... Let's make a save. Once you've set up your um, set up your scene, set up your characters, like we can move Martha around a little to make him uh, fit just perfectly where we want him to be. But he's pretty good right there. You can do you can do as such. And once everything is done, save. The good thing about saving is because you can always reload if something goes uh, goes crazy, which it sometimes does. Like sometimes characters will walk off, or you'll have some sort of crazy stuff go on. So always make saves before you begin filming. And later on I will show you how to make like NPCs with the faces of your player. Meaning I can I can spawn in like a Kajor NPC right now if I wanted to. It's a bit off topic, but I'll just show you what's coming up, I guess. You don't want to spawn in the um 00007 Kajor there. That's uh that's not what you want to spawn in. If I search for that, you can see, oh, there's, uh, there's Kajor. Hello. Nice to see you there. I could try how to make those NPCs later on. You can also make your player look like a character in the creation kit. So there's many, there's many ways to, uh, work around that. But for now, set up your scene, save, and let's prepare for the recording. Step 5. Recording. Now, I always have a script next to me when I'm recording. I have it on my other monitor, but I suppose you could always also maybe just print it out or play in windowed and have it on the side, whatever works, just so you can see the script to make sure you get all the right angles. Now, I've gone over all of the console commands like TFC, toggle flying controls, suckism, set universal camera speed multiplier, I believe, good speed and TM toggle menus, and there you go, Bob's your uncle. Another thing I would like to say before recording though is that if you're going to be using TFC a lot, it's usually best to be using a gamepad. Meaning if you get the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Control Switcher, you're going to be able to switch very easily between a gamepad and a keyboard and mouse. So that mod is uh, highly recommended. Let's see, let's switch to gamepad mode right here and there we go. Smooth movement. Now another thing that I really, really recommend that you do is that you open up the menu and disable the Skyrim music. Because we're going to be cutting back and forth so much that the music is going to be uh, cutting out. So make sure your music is pretty down low, even muted, because you can always add music later on, you know, to make it all fit. So once you have started recording, remember if you're using a trial, you only have 30 seconds, so set it up perfectly first. Remove the menus, and right here we're going to have like an establishing shot of the, of the scene. So I'm going to switch to my gamepad 
and then I'm just gonna like fly over and get like a nice little zoom in on them. So this is gonna be the opening establishing shot where we cut to Kajura and Martha standing by each other and hunting brew meadery right here. Super simple. This is the machinima technique I used in like season one and season two of Kajor mostly. The uh, facial expressions didn't come until like episode 15. And then once you're done, you hit the uh, disable. Ow. <laughs> you hit the disable, not like stop record button, and you go out of your commands again. Okay, so now that we all know that we have the establishing shot, the next one is going to be a line from Kajor. Okay, let's uh, let's make sure we get a good look at. Kajor's face and for a lot of these talking ones you won't actually need the gamepad you can just have like a simple a simple shot of them Kajor looks uh Awfully happy maybe a bit too happy We can always open this up and change it on the go like let's say we want him to have like a happy expression of like 50 instead That's better. That's better And then I usually just read out a line from my script like so remind me again my thought how come we aren't out there chasing Dobin? Just so I know that I have enough time to get the shot. Now I know that, okay, that's enough shot. I can add audio over that in post-production. That's good. What's the next shot? Okay, it's Marthar. Let's swing over to Marthar right here. And usually if you can't record or if you want to be more, I guess, organized, you can stop the recording right there. Then you turn around to Marthar, get in position, and then you start a recording again. And once you've done that, you can easily find the files later. You won't have to go through one big file and cut and find everything you need. So, well, we're waiting for a line or to decrypt that file you and Alice found, remember? So, in the meantime, I figured we should take a day off. Just as guys. And, of course, you could also just do the voice acting on the fly like I'm doing now, but that's very beginner. But if you want to, you can. That's what I did in parts of Kijo Season 1. But usually I would record it in Audacity afterwards, just for more control over everything. Okay, I got the Marthar shots. Now the next shot, Kajor seems to be a little, um... He's trying to dodge Marthar's request. So we need to make Kajor seem a bit more, um... Like he's not willing to do this. And I think I have a good animation for that, actually. I think it's called Nervous, it's in part 5, yes. Like, Kajor will start, um... Looking around the room nervously. Right? Yeah, there we go. He's gonna start looking around like, um, I really don't want to be here right now. Because he's scared of Marthar's plan. Like, you have to think, how is my character feeling at the moment? Uh, so what if we do, like, some, uh, fear? Yeah, that, that works. So we can keep this shot. Uh, well, I really have some, um, uh, other matters to, uh, attend to. And then we switch to Marthar, and Marthar is a bit skeptical. He's like, "Yeah, okay, you're bullshitting me. What, what, do you, what do you really, what do you really mean?" So we're gonna open this up, change his facial expression to anger. Yeah, that fits. Actually, we could have him cross his arms as well. Ah, we can do that later. And then he's like, "Like what?" Let me go back to Kajor, and Kajor is still like. Oh, you know, water the plants, brew some skooma, watch the grass grow. And then Martha gets a bit more, a bit more angry. So we can, we can have him fold his arms <clears throat> if we want to. So let's, let's go ahead and uh, do that. Now, the last used animation on Martha was the folding arm uh, animation. So what you can do is that you can use an animation like this. And once it's done playing, that'll be like the last used animation, and this can be instantly recalled by using the NPC replay, which I have a uh, hotkey to four. So we'll get a shot of Martha here, and then I'll click four during his dialogue, so to say. Hmph, I get it. Don't want to spend time with your best pal Martha, huh? Just to sort of give the shot a bit more when you don't have lip syncing. It's nice to have those little animations from time to time. And then, uh, is Kajor still looking around nervously? Yeah, he is. So I want Kajor to stop doing that now, because that's getting a bit repetitive. So we're going to do resets. And if this resets their face, it doesn't matter too much. So Kajor's going to be... Oh, okay, that happens sometimes. It starts flying a bit. Kajor's going to be a bit more sad now as he tries to explain to Martha why he doesn't want to hang out with him. I feel like just a normal sad shot works for this. No, it's just that every time we do something like this, things take a weird turn. Like that time we jumped into an alternate dimension and barely made it back alive. And then I usually just leave a few seconds at the end where I can cut in anything else that I need, have some extra time. It's always good. 
Then we'll switch to uh, Martha, who's gonna get a puzzled expression. Now, if you want a character to change expression mid-sentence, you can do that. So let's let's go through how to do that. Let's uh, hit the NPC uh, replay, or not the NPC replay, I'm sorry, the NPC like puppeteer command place. Go to favorites, set, animation 5. Then we're going to miscellaneous, facial, and we go to the next, puzzles. That's what we want. So whenever I now press number 5, Martha's face should change to puzzled. Because we have puppeteer favorite 1, favorited from our inventory, then hotkey to 5. Now, I don't want him to make it already, I need it to happen mid-conversation, so we're gonna go to reset. And if that doesn't work, then you can just go and uh, put like a normal face on him. What, he, what was he on? He was on like anger, so... You know, continuity and consistency is important. So he's gonna go from anger to puzzled by me pressing the 5 hotkey on the keyboard. So here we go. How did we escape that world again? And as you can see, he'll just get that little eyebrow raise during it, which makes it seem more alive when you don't have voice acting. And then Kijora's gonna be like... Kijora's gonna be back to neutral a bit as he's talking now. Let's see, resets. That doesn't always work when you're in TFC mode, so... You can just go to... No, that doesn't, that doesn't work either, okay. We're just gonna go to like, facial and just put the power down and like, give him like a... Like a happy face or something, there we go, that's more neutral. And he's like... I can't remember, the details don't matter. But I'm skeptical about this for a reason, you know? And then Martha's gonna try and like, persuade him, so Martha needs to do like, some sort of gesture here, I feel. So, we're gonna open up, what kind of face should he have? He's trying to say like, don't worry, this time we'll be different. He's gonna smile. He's gonna have a smile on his face. So we're gonna increase the power, and do happy. Then let's find a good animation for Martha to do. Maybe some sort of like, uh, civil cheer, that, that might work. Yeah, that, that can work. Okay, so we'll do TM, and I remember the last used animation was the civil chair, so I'll just use the NPC replay, which is linked to 4. Don't worry, this time will be different. Have some faith in your friend, eh? Yeah, that looks like it can work. I think Kajor's gonna be, um... Let's see, Kajor should also do an animation here, because he's sighing. Uh, I don't know if there's like a face palm animation or anything similar. Uh, let's see, what what could uh, work for that? Like some sort of okay, I I give up sort of like hmm. Instead of an animation, we're just gonna have his face break into a smile. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna go to facial and then we're gonna go to happy, and then that's the last used animation we have for his face. Now normally you could actually reset this and then just press the replay button, but for some reason that's not working at this moment, so... That's okay, we'll just go to favorites, animation number one, because one through four are for the players. This is defaulted to like a civil chair. We're gonna go to favorites, set, animation number one, facial, happy. So now this is set to animation um, number one, and we can access this via a hotkey, so if we go to items, Puppeteer favorite one, let's favorite that, and then put this on, well, six. That's just the only spot that's available, so let's put his face back to a more normal state, because the reset button doesn't seem to be cooperating at the moment. There we go, now it's a more, uh, now it's a more normal expression, so I believe if we now go to facial and increase the power a little, when I now press the hotkey six to activate favorite number one, he should smile. So let's see if my theory is correct. Ah, okay then, Marthard. What will you have us do today? So yeah, that, that seems to work out. Now, Martha needs to, like, come up with this, uh, great idea. So I want to, like, have a little face zoom on him. That's a bit too quick for my taste, though. So let's do, like, suckism 01, and then just, like... Zoom in on Marthar's face. Well, our journey begins at the hot springs. That was actually a bit too slow, so we can uh, put it up a bit if we want to. Well, our journey begins at the hot. That was also like a bit too quick. Like you gotta just find the right 
the right amount of zoom and the right amount of speed. Well, our journey begins at the hot springs. And that works out. And that works out. Now, if you have like more characters or you need more than just the simple uh, talky faces, and those shots are easy to get as well. You can always just have shots where you uh, pan around your characters talking. I do this for like prolonged talking sequences when you get tired of just looking at their face. I used to do a lot of that in season two, just having the camera like zoom around, getting some angles here and there. So that's basically the procedure I used back in the day before lip syncing and all the fancy stuff came in. So hopefully that helped out a little bit. Now that we've done that, we're gonna go into post-production. Now you must open your video editor of choice. I personally like to use Sony Vegas Pro, but any video editor that can like handle several video and audio tracks like this, you know, will work for the purposes of this. The important thing is that you're not using something like Windows Movie Maker, which I find hard to use because of the limited amount of things you can do with it. I guess it would work if you're not gonna add anything extra on top, if you're just doing everything in one video and one audio file, but usually you want something like this or Adobe Premiere, and you can actually get a free trial for Sony Vegas. I think it's like a 30-day trial. I don't think the limitations are too big either, so you could check that out if you want to, but this is the editor I'm gonna use, so use whatever editor you're comfortable with, and hopefully you'll, uh, you'll learn something from this. Now the first thing we want to do here is that we want to make sure that our settings are correct for what we're going to be working with. I'm going to be um, working with 720p footage, uh, not 1080p, so I can I can change this to... Um, well, just 720p. Like, I'm going to render it in 1080, but I'm going to work with 720 and it's a bit easier that way. I'm hoping to be able to do like true uh, 1080p once I get more upgrades, so you can now either Take the footage from your Fraps folder and simply drop it in right here. But if that doesn't work, you're probably running this uh, program as an admin and that doesn't always work. So then I would recommend going to File and then Import and find the file there and then just import it. So once it's imported, You'll see, you'll probably have lots of different files, because that's why I, what I advised you to do. But I just did it all in one file, because I was recording myself, recording a game, it got a bit advanced. So, this is all of the files done in one take. And if you've done the same as me and just done it all in one take, that's okay. If you're using Sony Vegas, always right-click, go to Switches and do Disable Resample. Otherwise, you get a horrible motion blur effect that just looks gosh-awful. So, what you're gonna do once you have this here is that you, we need to find the important parts. Like a lot of this we're not gonna keep in the main uh, the main file itself, that's not important. We need to just go through it and trim it until we find only the shots that we wanna use. So let's have a look. Where's the opening shot that we made early on? We're messing around with the Puppeteer Master right now and the say commands, I think. Okay, here we go, here we're getting it. So we're gonna have this at the start, and we're gonna just zoom across over here. Okay, good. So I usually just do like a very raw edit at the start where I just find the necessary clips. And there we have Kidjor talking. I'm setting the mood, and there we go. Then I'll just move along till I notice that I start panning over to another character. I hit S to split it. And there we go, that's the first Kidjor talk scene. We'll zoom ahead till we find and we'll zoom along until we find the Marthar clip. And then we'll go towards the end of that. And once I cut away, I'll split it again and start trimming. Get the Kijor shot. Was I doing something fancy here? I'll wait until the menus have been disabled again. There we go. Then I'll just drag it along until we find just where it stops. And then we just hit S and split it. So this is basically the uh, general procedure I go through. Like I cut out all of the in-between, so I just am left with the uh, important shots that I really need for my for my character. So here we have Martha being angry. This is a rather short clip. This is where he says like, um, he says, like what? That's what he says, so it's so short. And then we have Kijora looking around nervously again. And before we cut away, split it. So you can probably get the procedure by now. So I'm gonna go through and cut out the necessary clips and then I'll see you once that's done. 
You should hopefully not have to do this if you did what I said and just start recording whenever you have the perfect shot and stop recording as soon as that shot is done. That way you'll have a lot of extra time because, you know, this little editing process takes a little while. So you can skip the whole cutting out the uh, bad parts if you just do some extra work at the beginning. Okay, here I have all of the files, introduction, Kajor, Martha, all of the different clips here. And they're all ready to be put together, but right now, before we add music or, you know, effects or anything, you can see that this track that we've recorded, this is mostly just background noise from Skyrim's interior. And it's it. this is fine for the scene, it just helps make the scene alive, but if there's any sort of audio you don't want here, you should probably delete this. And you can just unlink them by pressing U, and then just delete the clip itself. Because if you see that whenever you press something, something else goes blue, that means that they're like a group. And if you delete one, you delete both. It's convenient, but can also be detrimental. So just remember to ungroup anything before you go deleting. Now we can import the audio. So if you find your audio file that you rendered, which in our case was this one, which I didn't import. Again, if you forgot how to, go to File, Export, not Import, I did it on my desktop, okay. So remember where you place your files, kids, it'll help out in the long run. Do not question the contents of my desktop, thank you very much. And we'll just drag and drop that in here. And once we have this down, we can place it here, and I usually like to have this track on top. Now you can adjust the audio. You all usually want the volume of the voices to be louder and then like any background noise or not only background noise but like ambient noises and music to be a bit lower so we'll prepare that. You can also name these tracks if you want to like VA, uh, BG sounds, background sounds and then like music. You can do something like that if you want to and then like you can name these if it gets confusing for you but it usually won't. So what we're gonna do right now is that we're gonna start out with the simple fade in. So we're gonna drag this over to fade, we're gonna drag the sound over to fade, and so we just get a nice smooth fade in. This camera work here is not the greatest, but it's, you know, just made quickly for, you know, demonstrational purposes. So we'll fade over here, and then once we get close enough, I'll probably just do what I normally did um, back in the day. I'll just do like a transition effect from this clip to this clip. It doesn't like... I don't know, I'm, I kind of like more of just very quick cuts this time around, but back in the day I did translations and they work okay for this type of uh, this type of content instead of just having like a straight cut where you can have a little transition. We'll do that for this purpose, but you can do it however you want. So let's go through the file uh, here. So remind me again, Marthar. Yeah, it's a bit loud. So remind me again, Marthar. How come we aren't out there chasing Dobin? So these files themselves are not of particularly high quality, they were sort of rushed early a morning. So, <laughs> before my sister woke up. So there we go, we'll place this here, and once it fades to Kajur, he'll start saying his line, and we'll move that over. So, remind me again, Marthar, how come we aren't out there chasing Dobin? And then, yeah, as you can see, I have plenty of extra space here, and that's, that's okay, that's not a problem, really. I mean, if you have the space for it on a disc. And I'll move over the Marthar clip, make the same transition, I usually try to make them the same length. Like 10, uh, 0 0.10 seconds, I believe that is. So it's like, or it's it's some sort of measurement of seconds that I don't get, but that's usually the uh, just keep the same amount for every fade, so it doesn't feel like unnatural. Then it fades to Marthar, and as you see, I've done all of the Kajor voices. Uh, well, uh... in one go here. So I need to move ahead in the file until I find Marthar, because I usually like to stay in one character at a time, so I don't have any inconsistencies. Well, we're waiting for a liner to decrypt. The there we go, there's the first line of Marthar, his sexy, sexy voice. So we'll go over here, and we'll fade that in. The reason I fade in here is because sometimes you might hear a little... If there's any noise here, it will cut in suddenly. If you fade it in, it'll most likely be masked. Well, we're waiting for a liner to decrypt that file that you and Alice found, remember? As you can see, I'm about to say my next sentence here. Remember? So in the meantime, I figured we should take a day off. Okay, that was the entire first sentence. If you're ever unsure what the script is, you know what you should do? You should look at the script. So I can bring up the script right here. We're waiting. In the meantime, figures to take a day off. Just us guys. Okay, so I need even more of the file here. It's good to double check. Us guys. Off. 
Just us guys. And then we'll uh, delete this and we'll move over to the next file, which is Kujur looking around nervously, make a little fade effect here. Uh, well, uh, I really have some uh, other matters to attend to. This this one is just barely going to be long enough, or do I have more at the start? I have more at the start. Uh, uh, well, uh, okay, yeah, that works. Then we'll move over to the next ones. Uh, I'm going to click this, and I'm going to go here and shift click and just move them over a bit so they're closer to me. Then we'll fade in Marthar's response. He's going to be a bit more grumpy. And Marthar's over here. So in the meantime, I figured we should take a day off. Like what? There we go. Like what is going to be his next line. So I'm going to split it, and I'm going to do Control x Cut it out and then go over here and control V to paste it if you're super lazy, because I am super lazy and it's all about finding the small shortcuts to help your workflow, right? Like what? Very short, very sweet. Then we're gonna cut back to Kidjor's next shot. And Kidjor's gonna say something like Oh Oh, you know, what are the plans? I need more of this, so we're gonna move it up, and then I'm gonna see just how much I have to work with here. Is this a bit too little? Hmm. That's sometimes an issue I have, which is why I recommend you do longer takes, just in case you get into scenarios like, like this where you need more footage, but you don't have enough. So we're gonna try moving the audio closer. Oh, you know, what are the plans? Brew some skooma, watch the grass grow. Worst case scenario, I'm gonna stretch this a few seconds by holding down control. Oh, you know, what are the plans? Brew some skooma, watch the grass grow. So that's like an emergency situation. I wouldn't recommend it, but if we just stretch it out a little bit, nobody will uh, nobody will notice unless I told them that it was stretched out. And then we'll do the next Martha clip. This is the Kajor dialogue now, and this is the Martha dialogue. So let's pull this over and see if I got what I needed. <laughs> I get it. You want to spend time with your best pal Marthor, huh? It's a bit peaky. It's not the best audio work ever, but it works for the purposes of the demonstration. No. No, it's just that every time we do something like this, things take a weird turn. Like that time we jumped into an alternate dimension and barely made it back alive. Also, save. I've been a very, very bad boy and I've not been saving, which is bad. Now, when we look at the script, we can see that we have a flashback to WoW Machinima right here. So we'll need to get that flashback footage. So I'll take the footage and drop it in here. Now, I want some sort of flashback effect here. Oh my. I was gonna make a series where World of Warcraft meets Skyrim, but it just sort of ended up as a one-time thing, really. Process. Looks like we're in a big city of sorts. How do we continue to our destination? We need to be quick if we want to see her. I would think we... Oh my. Look over there! I... So yeah, that's, that's Machinima and Skyrim for you. I mean, I'm no Nixium, but hey, I had, I had fun making it. Whoops. So what part should we have as the flashback? I guess something that sort of symbolizes them both being in... in World of Warcraft together. So we need a shot of uh, both of them. Please help me. What's wrong? There's a monster in my house. If you slay it, I will give you 50 copper and this ragged cape. Why would anyone agree to that? Alright, we'll have- Hmm. Maybe this could work. I mean, I'm not gonna have any audio, so it doesn't matter where it's from. Then I'm gonna unlink this by pressing U. If you ever, like, want to undo that, you can just click the both and press G and you can group them up again. Grouping up is useful when you're moving around stuff, but it can also be a pain. So let's take this. ...into an alternate dimension and barely made it back alive. So I'll have this fade in as he's talking. So I'll have this on the top. And what we'll do to make it fade in is that we can pull down the opacity for this. So it'll fade in like this. I mean, there are more fancy things we could do with it too, but for now this sort of works. Fade in, fade out, lower the opacity to maybe half. That time we jumped into an alternate dimension and barely made it back alive. Yeah, that works just fine. Move over Marthar's files, make sure it's at the correct point. I'm using the mouse wheel to scroll in and out, by the way. Just quick little ways of going about doing things. I, I can't remember. The details. 
Oh, wait, nope, oh, that's Kajor, that's Kajor. Also, I saw a little, but look at the camera here. You see a little adjustment? It's important that you take your footage and make sure that you don't get any of those in the video itself. It's always important. That's why looking over your footage several times is a good idea. How did we escape that world again? All right, this is where Martha gets his puzzled look after a while. So let's watch for his eyebrows. Okay, so his eyebrow starts being raised here. So if we do something like this. How did we escape that world again? We can see his eyebrow move. That looks good. Now Kijor is going to reply that he has no idea. Fact of the matter is that Dark couldn't come up with an idea for episode two of the Wow Machinima tutorial. I mean, just the series. Don't worry. No, this is Martha's dialogue. You could also um, mark these if you want in another way. I can't remember. The details don't matter. But I'm skeptical about this for a reason, you know? You have all the reason to be skeptical when Kijuro wants to take you out on a... You know, whatever he wants. He, when he wants to have a day off, just you guys, be, be skeptical. Don't worry. This time will be different. Have some faith in your friend, eh? Okay, so Martha's pleading and Kijuro's... Okay, so we have Martha doing animation here. We want to make sure we get that actually into the picture. Don't worry, this time will be different. Have some faith in your friend, eh? And as you can see, whenever you use... I don't know if you can hear this sound or not. You hear an equip sound whenever you use one of the puppeteer items. So that's usually why you don't want to use the uh, interior background track. I mean, it's barely noticeable, but it's there, so... If we're gonna use the ambient sound, then be aware of that, but I usually just cut it out. I could just do like shift click U and then delete and get rid of it all if you're not using it. Because usually you can always get that sound later on. Just do everything in post. <laughs> That's my motto. We'll do it in post. It's a terrible motto, by the way. Okay, so is this Kijor? Yeah, it's Kijor. Okay then, Marthar. What will you have us do today? Okay, that's Kijor's final line, and it's gonna be followed by Martha saying the hot spring thing. Let's see, do we have the uh, best zoom here? Well, our journey begins at the hot springs. Yeah, we even got a peaked microphone there, that's beautiful. Today. Well, our journey begins at the hot springs. To be continued. Then it's gonna cut to to be continued. So yeah, this is how I made machinimas back in the day, pretty much. That's what this tutorial is. So here's a little pan shot we did. To be continued. We're gonna fade this out. And we're gonna fade this out. And I'm gonna do shift click U delete. Be continued. And then we can go to this track insert text media. And then I'm gonna go and type in to be continued. Choose a font, I really like the uh, Narcism, Narcism font. The Narcism font is good, but remember to choose it first. Then you can increase the size of the text. And I always use a outline around my text, just a slight black outline. So let's pull this down and the darkness is in the corner, okay. Then you can choose how wide it's gonna be. And then we can just fade that in. To be continued. And then it fades out. Okay, um, that's sort of the rough edit of what we have at the moment. We have Kijor talking, everybody replying, and everything looks to be okay, but it's very bland because there's no background noise and there's no, no nothing. Now usually you could add like some sort of like ambient interior noise here. I think the most important part now is just going to be some music. So open up the Skyrim folder. Probably some tavern music. Tavern 5 is a classic. It's a, it's a good old classic. Uh, we're going to have the uh, no background sounds then. But that's the good thing about having several tracks. You can have full control of everything. So this starts a few seconds in. Here we go. So we're gonna cut that a little bit so it starts a bit sooner. I want to adjust the quality a bit, or volume rather. And then we wanted to get like 
less noticeable as they're talking. We want it to just fade out a little bit. So if you hit, I'm just gonna adjust it like this instead. If you hit Shift V, you get a volume line. And you can do some really cool things with this. For example, if I wanted to be loud this first section, but then like start fading out as Kijor begins talking and then maybe come back at the end, we can just hit here to make a point and then we can hit here to make a point and then I can just drag this point and it'll have a little fades. So remind me again, Marthar. And then it's low, 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 low. And then at the end, I can do the same where I can make this go up again. Brings to be continued. For example, so that's very, very simple. That's very, very easy. Now, what I would recommend doing is going over, making sure all transitions are good, all audio sounds good, mix it just right with the volumes. And once you're done, you can, uh, you can render it. I'll show you the render settings up here. I have a few different uh, formats for different frame rates and different qualities. Let's open the 1080p one, customize this. I render this as a WMV, Windows Media Video V11. So that's the preset you have to take. And then once you're inside that, you can change, uh, change it to your liking. That's my audio. This is my video. All the settings are for the optimal quality. That's the bit rate. I'm not 100% sure what that does. And Make sure you're rendering it on best. And then you can also uh, favorite that, so it shows up as favorites only later on. And you can render it. And once it's done, it's gonna look a little something like this. So remind me again, Marthar. How come we aren't out there chasing Dobin? Well, we're waiting for a liner to decrypt that file that you and Alice found, remember? So in the meantime, I figured we should take a day off. Just us guys. Uh, well, uh, I really have some, uh, other matters to attend to. Like what? Oh, you know, what are the plans, brew some skooma, watch the grass grow. <laughs> I get it. Don't want to spend time with your best pal Marthor, huh? No, it's just that every time we do something like this, things take a weird turn. Like that time we jumped into an alternate dimension and barely made it back alive. How did we escape that world again? I can't remember. The details don't matter. But I'm skeptical about this for a reason, you know? Don't worry. This time will be different. Have some faith in your friend, eh? <sighs> okay then, my thought. What will you have us do today? Well... Our journey begins at the hot springs to be continued. And that's it for the very, very basic machinima. Thank you so much for watching. Tune in next time when we continue the tutorials on how to make awesome Skyrim machinima. Stay dark. Oh.